I'm here in the Sandaga market in Douala, Cameroon. According to the United Nations, the population of sub-Saharan Africa could double in the next 30 years. Imagine twice as many people here buying twice as much food. Where is that food going to come from? Douala, the economic capital of Cameroon. Population nearly 3 million and growing. Located at the mouth of the Wuri River on the Gulf of Guinea, it's the biggest port in Central Africa. A hub for oil, cocoa and coffee, timber and food. Enough food to stock the city's markets for now. But as the population grows, the region will have to produce more food in more places. In the Lobesu neighborhood, I meet a young urban farmer named Mabel. We're between a school and an apartment building. Why put a farm here in the middle of the city? I see it as an advantage, because the people living in the apartments have an easy way to get vegetables. They buy them directly from the farm when they're still fresh. You have to disinfect your feet. Why? Because of the insects. Mm -hmm. The plastic keeps pests and diseases out and heat and moisture in. Their strings are for the plants. They'll grow and curl around it. The plants are aubergines, planted just three weeks ago. Mabel is an intern. She's learning from Ombe, the greenhouse's manager. This is an organic fertilizer that we're using. It's called Water Hope. Built on a disused lot, the greenhouse is designed for intensive production of high-quality produce in a limited space. It's 100% organic and requires close supervision. The constant temperature means three or four harvests a year instead of just one outdoors. Okay. Mabel's greenhouse is part of a growing network of urban farms in and around Douala. She takes us across the river to a fish farm. Like the greenhouse, it's designed to maximize output in a limited space. This is an example of an aquaponic system. The fish waste, their excrement, gets filtered and then pumped back into what we call the substrate. It's volcanic. There's bacteria and worms inside, which transform the waste and help the plants to grow. That's a lettuce we planted less than a week ago a compact system that provides fresh fish and vegetables for homes and restaurants. Boris custom designs aquaponic kits for delivery around the country. He also runs the biggest fish breeding operation in Central Africa. There are more than 30,000 baby fish in here. We're preparing them for a shipment to Congo, Brazzaville. And there are catfish in here? Yes, catfish. Kittenfish. <laughs> That's where we keep the baby tilapia. In each tank you can see, there are more than 100,000 baby fish. How many do you breed per month? We reproduce more than 3 million per month. 3 million? Yes. We sell around a million in Cameroon. But we export the rest, because there aren't enough big farms here. Cameroon is building up its fish production, but the country still imports 180,000 tons of fish a year. Each family needs to produce a little. If each family produces a small quantity, it'll decrease imports. Boris believes his combination of farming large and small can help Cameroon become self-sufficient. What's that, Hugo? <laughs> The Sandaga Vegetable Market, 4 a.m. 100 kilo bags of potatoes driven overnight from Chong in the west, cabbages from Bafu. As the market vendors start selling, cars and taxis take over, ferrying sackfuls from farmers closer to the city. Our observer Bertrand works as an IT consultant in the Netherlands, but he also runs a startup in Cameroon, and he's an expert in this market. These are onions, that's garlic. Those are green beans over there. 
peppers, eggplant. What's that? Bitter cucumber. People have started associating different foods with particular illnesses. They say this is good for diabetes. It's kind of a trend, a local way of encouraging people to eat organic, even if they don't use that word. Bertrand says that while few of the shoppers in Douala specifically look for organic products, most of what they buy comes from small and medium producers and is essentially natural. Do most of the products here have chemical fertilizers? No. Taste is an important criterion for all except the poorest families. The little carrots from the West are sweeter. The big ones from other regions aren't so good. Much of the produce ends up on the ground. A lot of vegetables here end up on the ground. There's a statistic that's well known in Africa. Farmers lose between 30 and 40 percent of their produce between harvest and the point of sale. Bertrand offers to take us to the country to learn more. We meet Madel, an expert in plantains. She participated in something called Cistaldo. Cistaldo is the city of Douala's food strategy initiative. Douala is the first city in Central Africa to announce plans for a comprehensive food security policy. The first step, a report compiled by Madel's professor, 600 pages of extensive, detailed research. Membership figures are below 50% for all of these groups. It means most of the farmers are not in cooperatives. The report highlights problems such as waste, isolation of villages, the poor state of roads, and a lack of overall coordination. Madel takes us to meet Isaac on one of the four fields he maintains in the bush near his village. You have to be careful when harvesting. The bunch could smash. Today he's harvesting the last of his plantains. You have to make the cut high up. If you do it too low, the bunch could hit the ground and be destroyed. Easy does it. Easy does it. This tree is done for the year. A tree only produces... One bunch per stalk. One or two bunches from each tree per year. Isaac estimates each tree costs him around 5,000 francs to maintain, but prices fluctuate. You can get around 4,000, 4,500, depending on the season. But right now, it's high season for plantains. Prices go as low as 1,000. 1,000 francs for a year's work. One reason Isaac gets so little, the middlemen between his village and Douala. In the value chain, you've got the producer, that's Papa Isaac, the wholesaler, the transporter, the semi-wholesaler, and the retailer. Five links in the chain. If there was a way of getting a message out to buyers in Douala, there's a Mr. Isaac in Njombe who has two hectares of plantains ready to sell in two weeks. Would that be useful? Yes, yes. Do you know WhatsApp? WhatsApp, WhatsApp. WhatsApp. I don't have it. Bertrand has developed an app that puts producers directly in touch with buyers. When a producer like you has several buyers, what happens? Competition. Competition, exactly. So prices are higher. Bertrand hopes his app, with 10,000 users and counting, will cut out waste and raise farmers' incomes. If they have fewer constraints, a new generation will be encouraged to go into farming, and that new activity will increase overall production. <laughs> The next day, Mabel takes us to her company's main farm in the area, 40 kilometers from the city. We meet her boss, Roland Fomundam. So you've got tons of land around here. Why would you have a greenhouse out here in the countryside? Well, uh, because one of the things that we focus on greenhouse farming is the quality of production, and uh, that quality could be exported anywhere. 
A US-educated technology entrepreneur, Roland has built 24 greenhouses in Cameroon in the last five years, 10 in Nigeria, and two in Ivory Coast. We have uh, this greenhouse measures about uh, 450 square meters. Uh, and here we're growing the red and the yellow bell peppers, as you can see them. Um, so it's like a twentieth of a hectare. It's like, like nothing yeah, compared like, to yeah, yeah, it's, outside. Yeah, it's nothing. But what you can harvest from here, it's way more than what you would harvest on a hectare. And if you look at countries like Poland, you look at even Kenya, that is fourth largest exporter of flowers. You look at Israel, the core technology that they have is a greenhouse technology. And Cameroon, of course, has a very, very unique advantage. And its central location amongst other countries gives you the very good market-ready population to consume almost every and anything that they do grow. Roland's farm is surrounded by small producers using traditional methods. The other farmers here, they've got the same soil, the same climatic conditions and everything. What can they learn from your greenhouses? Could they use them? Would they be useful for them? You know, when we started, they were quite surprised about what we were doing. Uh, but more and more, they've learned a lot about uh, what we do, uh, you know, from organic insecticides, organic pesticides. Um, they're also very amazed to see that we can grow tomatoes that can grow up to four meters in height. So they're beginning to believe in that. It is changing the mindset, and that is what we have always wanted to do. Roland sells greenhouses like this with equipment and training for four million francs. It's a fortune for a small farmer. But if a few of them can get together with the access he gives to buyers, he says their investment can pay off in 18 months. So Roland, do you think it's possible for Cameroon to double its production of food in 30 years? Very easy, very easy. We have very good land. Uh, the government is working very hard to develop very good road networks. And you're getting very interested people involved in agriculture now. Many people are beginning to realize that agriculture is the place for the future.